to CJ. Yeah, I, I have I, one more question, if you'll indulge me. Of course. Um, okay. And you only touched on it very briefly in your book. And clearly I did my homework. I read the book. I read the Thank book. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this concept that the universe is flat. Yes. This is something that has been discussed a lot, but it's hard to wrap my head around, right? I'm not okay. flat. The earth is not flat. I can look right. up and see right. that trees exist and things are not two dimensional. So what does it mean when we say the universe is flat? Great question. And, and this is a, in my opinion, uh, self-inflicted error on the in the part of physicists and astronomers we should not have called it flat back decades ago <laughs> okay because flat does indeed imply a two-dimensional surface that has no bends no ups and downs yeah. right something yeah. that's perfectly smooth and, and two-dimensional the correct word to use really should be euclidean um mm -hmm. Euclid, ancient Greek guy who did a whole bunch of stuff on geometry, right? Today, Euclid's elements are considered the foundations of our regular right. geometry. Um, for example, the idea that the sum of three angles in a triangle always adds up to 180 degrees. That's Euclidean geometry, okay? And so what happened was that uh, if you're doing just triangles on a sheet of paper, you think of it as flat. Right. So decades ago, centuries ago, when astronomers were thinking about the universe, they were just thinking, oh, it's flat, flat, flat. But it's not. It's three dimensional. It's Euclidean, though. And that is the point that we're talking about. So um, in a Euclidean space, the sum or Euclidean surface or anything like that, the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. But there is such thing as non Euclidean spaces. In non-Euclidean geometry, uh, like, for example, if you try to do geometry on the surface of a sphere, or if you try to do geometry on a horse's saddle, right, or if you take a, a, a twitchy thing and, and start moving <laughs> around and bending it, right, then the angles won't add up to 180. Sometimes it'll be more, sometimes it'll be less, and it depends on the geometrical construct of the universe. So a human lifetime ago, back in the middle of the 20th century, astronomers started realizing that they could not yet figure out whether the universe was Euclidean or non-Euclidean. But Euclidean has four syllables, Euclidean, <laughs> and flat has four letters and <laughs> one syllable. So I think that my uh, academic advisors and predecessors just used flat as a shorthand just to say <laughs> flat equals euclidean it means that if the universe is expanding which we know it is that a cube will remain a cube just a bigger cube a billion years from now or just a even bigger cube a billion years from now if it were not that if it had positive curvature then slowly that cube would turn more like into a sphere and if it had negative curvature, then that cube over billions of years would start looking more like a saddle or, you know, a pinched kind of thing. And so that was what we're trying to distinguish from. But if we had said just Euclidean from day one, then that particular confusion would not have crept into the world. <laughs> and, and I would feel much better about that. So sorry, <laughs> sorry you had to deal with that, CJ. But the answer is, yes, we think that the universe expands in such a way that a cube stays a cube, stays a cube uh, of space. Okay. And that means it's flat. But really, it means it's Euclidean. And we're too lazy to say Euclidean. So. <laughs>